forward. Um, so hello, welcome to um, the JTFN icebreakers and games um, for working online in our online learning lab. Um, we're so uh, pleased to have you all here and to be talking about this as we shift our programming into this space. Um, and I just wanted to um, maybe pick one or two people who were kind enough to put uh, their games into the chat box to just share. Um, I see um, Jessica Ost just po posted something that I haven't heard of, so I'm going to call on her to share with us what these games are. What is Seven Wonders Duel and Splendor? Can you tell us uh, what those two games are? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> think how to say it. Uh, they're both two people, two person player games, or Seven Wonders Duel is. Um, so you have to build wonders of the world and also maintain an army and also uh, gather resources to build your wonder. Um, that's Seven Wonders Duel. And then Splendor, you can play with multiple people, but it's also a two player game. And you have to collect different gems to buy other gems and then you have to get 15 points it sounds very silly when you're not playing it and i'm doing a pretty mediocre job at explaining it but they're a lot of fun it and sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> yeah they are fun we my husband and i've been playing them a ton for the past couple weeks so and they have good playability and they don't get boring so i recommend <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Jessica. And just one more. I see that Amy uh, mentioned code names. Can you tell us what code names is? Uh, hi. Um, code names. I've played with Danielle before even. Um, you have to um, get your your teammate to guess different words on a board by um, saying only one word. It's It's very fun. Amazing. And thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing the games. And I hope everybody is seeing lots of games that may be in their free time that they can go and enjoy um, and keep themselves busy um, as we're all in our spaces at home and, and looking for things to keep us uh, engaged and active. Um, so um, I'll just mention today we're going to be going into lots of different things. A lot of the work that we're doing today is based on our new curriculum, which um, as things are moving along, we hope to launch soon. Obviously, with all that's going on, things are, uh, the cogs are slowing a little bit, but we're very excited to be able to share that with you when it's ready. And much of today uh, is based in some of that new material. Um, so um, I'm going to pass it over to Danielle, who will help frame some of the things we're going to be covering today. Hi, everyone. Good to see everyone on, um, on this call. Uh, so we're going to be covering a lot of material today. Um, feel free to ask questions along the way in the chat box. There'll also be time for Q&A at the end. Uh, but just to cover about uh, what, what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be looking at some opening, opening rituals. How do we frame our space? Uh, games. How and why might you use a game in your program? Um, and how to do that with an online setting? We're going to show you some examples. We are going to demo them together. So we will get to do a little bit of game playing uh, during this session. Uh, we're also going to look at some prompt questions and how you can use those to enhance your space. Um, we are going to look at some closing rituals. We started beautifully with an opening ritual. Uh, we will look at closing rituals and then we will also have time uh, for Q&A at the end. So um, without further ado, we are going to make a start because we have a lot to do. So um, I am going to hand back over to Alana to start us off with our opening rituals. Uh, thank you so much, Danielle. Um, so one of the first things that we do in person very often in our programs is we walk into a space and it's a common space and it's established. And one of the things that is difficult about coming into this is how do we make it a unique space? How do we make it our own and how do we establish it as our own? So part of that is coming in and doing some sort of opening ritual at the beginning of each of your, each of your meetings to make your teens feel like, okay, this is our setting. This feels right. So 
some of the things you can do to frame your space um, is reading your mission statement. Start off every meeting by just acknowledging and remembering that you're here for that purpose. Um, another thing that you can read off is your group contract. Um, maybe you set up a group contract about expectations at the beginning of your uh, program. Maybe you make a new one for your online space that is specific, but that is also something you can read off and talk about to frame your space. Um, some other things we're going to dive deeply into and demo today is games and icebreakers. So we're setting up group dynamics and group norms um, and really working together to bond in this space. Um, other things you can do, as we just modeled for you at the beginning of this call, is framing the day. What is the agenda? Um, set the expectation of what you're going to be doing um, over the course of the session. Um, you can also, the same way we did, you can set up a prompt for the moment that people enter into the room. Uh, we set up a prompt for you. We also um, invited you to rename your, um, to rename your uh, profile in the space. Um, we invited you to use your pronouns. Um, those are all things that you can put into practice in your own sessions. Um, the other thing that you can do is, uh, which I haven't done as of yet, is just review instructions of how to use the platform. So uh, just a note, if you need to mute in the bottom left hand corner, there is a mute button. Uh, there's also a stop uh, and start video button so you can start and stop uh, if you need to step away for a moment. Um, there's the chat feature, um, which we have and, and we used already. Um, and so those are just a few things. There's also a screen view. So you can, in the top uh, right hand corner, you can look at it. Uh, the room is a gallery view and see everybody's face all at once or a speaker view where you're just viewing the person talking. So some of those buttons and review and make sure everybody is comfortable using the platform. Finally, the other thing that you can do, recognizing that now that we're in this online space and probably that teens are interacting in this way for many hours a day, especially if they're going to school, um, is to move our bodies. We can start off by saying like, and I will model it now, like let's do a nice stretch. Um, you can even invite them to get up and do this, to get out of their seats, to say, we're going to do a stretch and touch your toes. And even if you want to step away from the camera, but move around. Um, you can do a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Um, so let's try that. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And it's just a nice way to get the blood flowing if we're going to be sitting in front of a screen for an hour or even two hours. Um, it's also something you can use at the beginning. You could use it um, during a break also or coming back from a break. Again, getting the blood flowing also keeps our brains working. <laughs> so uh, definitely a great tool to incorporate um, just that little thing. Um, so, um, the why and how of games, um, Danielle is going to go into some of those pieces for you now. Wonderful. Oh, yes, we just did our move our body demo. There we go. Okay, so why do we use games? Um, sometimes there's this incorrect assumption that games are just thrown in for no reason, or games are um, uh, a waste of time when we have lots of other stuff to do. But games can actually be a really intrinsic, um, enhancing part of your program. And there are lots of reasons why you might slot in a game, either in, a, in, either in an opening ritual setting or somewhere in the middle. Um, it can actually be a really powerful tool at our, um, at our disposal to make things really interactive, a little bit fun, a little bit silly, but can also enhance what we're doing within our program as well. Um, so why do we use games? It can serve as an icebreaker. You can put it right at the beginning of your program, of your session, um, just to just that, break the ice, get people ready for the session. Um, if this is a new group or it's a group that doesn't meet very often, um, getting to know the group is really important. Just little get to know you games. Um, anything to do with like content that's gonna happen later, 
or just really to enhance the experience for the teams or the participants that you're working with so that they feel part of a cohort, so that they feel part of the group. Um, really excellent for learning names. Um, so when we are in uh, a Zoom situation, everyone has their names at the bottom of the screen. Um, but if you're doing something with a very large class, sometimes it's just easier to be able to look at the faces and know who you're talking to. Again, it's a really nice moment where people feel like they're getting to know the group by learning people's names. Um, breaking the tension is a huge one. M mood change as well. If you're going from one topic to the other, it serves as a really good bridge uh, to break any kind of tension. Um, you want to use this wisely. Um, you don't want to be dismissive of what is already happening in the space, but it can work as a really great mood changer or mood shifter. Um, so that kind of mood change, um, if you want to either like break attention or, or you want to take the teams or the participants from one state of mind to another, it can be very useful for that. Um, you can use it as an intro to a topic. You can use a game as a prompt um, so that the game thematically is linking to what you're going to be doing in that session. Uh, maybe if your session is reading your uh, going through your grant proposals and making a decision maybe the game that you do at the beginning is a decision making game or a communications type game so we can all link um, it can also be a really good break if you need to have one um, also really good for transitions and also it can be for fun um, if you really just want to add something or interject something into your session to kind of up the fun interaction level games can be very useful okay so we've done the why, now how? How do we run a successful game? And the great news is, is that generally for running a game, the rules of an, running an in-person game um, are very similar to using an online platform. Um, but sometimes we forget those. We forget those rules because we're placed in this other platform and we don't realize that all these great skills we have in our toolbox are actually totally transferable to an online space. Um, enthusiasm is so important. Um, even though we're online and we're in this little two inch by two inch box on someone else's screen, it doesn't mean that we're not animated and enthusiastic. Um, if I'm running a circle game in person, I can use my whole body. I would stand, I would jump around. I don't really have that option here because I would end up going off camera, but I can still be really enthusiastic about how I use my face, whether I'm gesticulating, how I use my voice. It's still all translates as being enthusiastic. Um, we want to explain rules really clearly and slowly. This might be the first time that someone has played a game like this. Uh, you want to make sure everyone is all on the same page. Um, you also don't want to make assumptions. This goes back to explaining the rules clearly. Uh, you don't want to assume that everyone has played that game before. If it is a cohort that is the same cohort that meets every single time, um, then you can look at the history of the group and use that to um, make your best judgment. But you want to avoid making any assumptions. Um, do a demo, do an example, which is what we are going to do later on. Every time you introduce a game, just do a quick demo round so everyone is really clear, especially in a Zoom setting. If it involves clicking on different things or navigating away from a page, you want to make sure that everyone has had a go, an example, go first. Um, if you have a game that means that someone is out or someone is waiting to participate, think about what those people are doing to, keeping, to keep them engaged. We're going to have a little look at some of the um, some of the breakout functions and how you use that and putting people in different spaces while they're waiting. So there are just a couple of tools that you can play with um, in order to consider like what does it mean if a, if a teen is out or waiting during the game. Um, just like now, uh, we have two facilitators to this um, webinar, Alana and myself. Uh, we're not there in person uh, to make um, eye contact with each other across a circle like we might be if we're running a game in person, but we can do that verbally. Um, you probably heard us go backwards and forwards that we, um, we prepared in advance exactly what we're going to do, but then we also lay each other up for success. So we pass things backwards and forwards in a really clear way. Um, so use other facilitators as well and make sure you're sharing the load. Uh, body language kind of goes back to the enthusiasm piece. Uh, just be aware uh, we're all in this tiny little box. Um, so think about what parts of your body you're actually using to convey, convey your message. Uh, voice is huge. Facial expression is huge. Other things just might not be translated as far as the video. So we just went over a little bit of the, uh, the why and the how. 
Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Alana um, to explain a little bit about how we can make these games a little bit more interactive while using the online platform. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, so yeah, it, when you're not in person, how are we going to make this space more interactive? Um, one of the wonderful things about Zoom is that it has a breakout feature. So one of the things you can do, whether it be as part of a game or part of a conversation, um, you can break your teens out into these rooms and have them partner up. That could be for a trivia challenge. That could be for interviewing one another and asking a prompt question. There's so many different ways that you can engage with the breakout feature, but it's one way to really, as facilitators, step back, let the teens have those conversations that they need to be having with one another as if you were circling up in a large room with little clusters of teens. Now we have that capability to do that in Zoom. So um, I can't express enough how wonderful breakout rooms are to let those teens have those bonding conversations separately. Another spot where you can um, be interactive is literally just raising a hand. You can do temperature checks um, for consensus building. You can use it in a step forward, step back activity of um, asking people what they've experienced or what they haven't experienced um, and get those hands raised and get people participating. Um, there's also um, this feature in the participant um, with each participant by their name. So if you click the participant button at the bottom of your screen, it's sort of in the middle, um, you can actually go by your name and raise your hand um, digitally as well as also manually. Um, and then you also just want to think about prep time. Can you do some sort of engaging activity and give them instructions in, in advance of your meeting? Can you send them a prompt in advance? Can you have them bring something in advance um, and give those instructions so your session will be more interactive um, and varied? Um, and so I wanna, with that, dive into some of the examples and game styles um, and the first section um, we're going to go into is show and tell style games. Um, and so a lot of times that might require some prep. You might need to email them with the prompt, um, ask them to bring something. The first style is create something. You can ask them to perhaps write a poem based on a prompt or make a collage or a piece of artwork or um, doctor a photo that they've taken and add to it. Um, there's so many different things that you could ask them to get creative with and have them ready to either share their screen or to hold up that thing uh, at the meeting and tell a little bit about the story behind it of what uh, they've made. Um, then we could do an old fashioned show and tell. And what I'd like to do is just demo that quickly now. Um, so the prompt is, Go somewhere in the room that you are in and find something that you can tell a Jewish story about. And we're gonna have one or two people just share back. Um, but I invite you to leave your screen for a moment, get up and go find something in the room that you can tell a Jewish story about. Um, and I will demo it for you before you find your own. Um, I'm gonna hold up my phone and the way that this is a Jewish item for me, is I've been using it a lot um, to honor my mother and my father, and I've been calling them constantly <laughs> um, in the past uh, few weeks. Um, but if you can go find something um, and then come back and I'll give you like a little less than a minute to do it. <laughs> And if you want to either raise your hand, either physically or as a participant digitally, you can do so if you want to volunteer to go. Do I have somebody who's ready already? Lisa Mickley, can you share with us your item? Yeah, it was very hard for me because I'm in a 
my study, which has a wall of Jewish books and all the Judaica that we have in our house is there too, but I didn't pick any of the obvious things. I picked something from um, a Jewish educational point of view. It is a, um, a paperweight with four stamps in it. And years ago, I worked for Baba Ganuz as their um, director of education, and we had a contest where Jewish students had to design a stamp for the state of Israel. And these are the four winning stamps that actually became stamps in Israel. And at this period where we all feel so far apart from each other, I sort of thought we can think about ways to make connections um, through stamps and other um, programs during this, this time. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. My beautiful Baba Ganu stamps from about <laughs> 15 years ago. Amazing, I love it. Thank you so much, that's so beautiful. Um, can I get... <laughs> Another volunteer to share. Yes, uh, Jackie Klein. Hi, everyone. Um, so we have a skeletal staff that's still in our synagogue office. Um, we all have our own offices, so we're properly social distancing. Um, but I have on my windowsill that was actually I inherited from my predecessor a whole bunch of stuffed animals. Um, and the kids really love it. But for me, it's a reminder of like, this one has a keeper on it, um, but it's a reminder that like Jewish life can be like warm and friendly and cuddly. <laughs> and that like, I mean, I look at Jewish life very much through the education and learning sphere, but having the bears and stuffed animals in eyesight is always like a good reminder for me. Amazing. That other people see it differently. Thank you. and. Just one more, um, one more person. Yeah, Sonia Marie. So I have um, here, these are uh, Shabbat candlesticks made by my kiddo. Oh, Sonia Marie, I th think you might have broken up a little bit. We got, sh I saw Shabbat candlesticks made by? Kids? Kids. <laughs> oh no I'm unstable I'm sorry oh. <laughs> but thank you thank you for sharing um and so you see like it's on the one hand it's easy to do you can find something in the room you can give a prompt question it can be anything also again it's another opportunity to get up to get away from the screen for a second and so you're getting the blood flowing, having them move a little bit, which I think is also important if we're to be staring at screens all day. Um, then there's also something that you can do. You can do a meme challenge. This is a lot of fun. This you can do in advance of your meeting. There are meme generators all over the internet. Um, and um, Danielle is actually going to copy and paste a link into the chat box so you can uh, look it up. Um, but you can actually share a prompt um, and ask your teens to create a meme based on a question and have them then share their meme at your meeting and tell a little bit of a story. Um, and, um, oh, I think you, she was trying to share examples, but well, that's okay, we'll move on. Um, there's also the um, photo share um, where we'll demo this also. If I could have even just one person um, find a picture on their phone um, that shows a picture that has no people in it, um, something of just a thing or a place, um, and tell the story behind that photo. And maybe Danielle, can you make it so I can see everybody for a second? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I see uh, Leah Kaplan. <laughs> um, hi everyone. So this is my photo. <laughs> um, we, it's a, my potted plant and her name is Fran and I have a very deep love for her. Um, and we actually came to Long Island uh, this past weekend to stay with our in-laws and Fran made the trip with us, which is hysterical. We like buckled her into the back seat and she made her journey. Uh, and she made it to New York from Kansas City in much the same way. So very funny. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it that she's just a traveling plant. Totally. Um, 
Awesome. So photo share is something that you can easily do. Usually I would recommend that your teens get this prompt in advance um, just so they can share the photo on, um, they can actually do a screen share and share the photo with everybody. Um, and it's a little bit easier to see than holding up the phone, but holding up the phone does work too. So um, there's multiple ways you can approach that. Also, if you have a session, you can leave a little bit more time for people to go and search their computers and, and pull something up on the fly. Um, we have a lot to get through today, so I, I just thought the phone would be like an easier and quicker way to go. Um, but so that's definitely something you can do. And then there's also something you can do an image scavenger hunt. So using a prompt, um, you can have uh, your participants actually gather images online. And there's this really great website, which we're going to um, just show you how it works. Um, Danielle and I are going to do a little demo ourselves to show you cluster. Um, and if you give me a moment, I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and it's going to pull up Facebook first, but okay. And so this is Cluster. Um, if you were at our facilitator training in um, this, uh, this past December, you might be familiar with this. Um, but essentially, it's a website where um, you can share a link and it will populate with everybody's photos as they upload them. So this is a really cool way to share uh, your screen and to um, ask a prompt. Um, for today's demo, we had, um, we had done the prompt, we had done Peer K a vote. It is not your duty to finish the work, but neither are you free uh, to neglect it. Um, and so Danielle, um, as I am talking, is going to be uploading an image to here. And so um, Danielle, how's it going for you? I don't know if she's there. Yep. Um, if you click refresh. Oh, sure. So now another image is populated. And if you have everybody doing this all at once, you'll have a nice full gallery and the teens will have the opportunity to talk about why they picked what they picked. So why did you pick what you picked, Danielle? Um, well, based on the prompt, um, I love the idea of kind of planting something and that you don't necessarily see the end result. Like when you plant a seed, you don't know that you're actually going to um, see the big tree at the end, but you know someone else will um, will benefit from that tree. So this is actually a photo um, from a mitzvah day activity where volunteers went out and planted trees and did some gardening work. So I thought that fitted um, the prompt pretty well. Amazing. Um, so thank you for sharing and sharing why you picked it. Um, and again, this is something you could do and have all the teens do and it's interactive and they can look up on Google right then and there to find images that reflect uh, the question and answer the question. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and we'll definitely uh, make sure to share these links with you so you can follow up and uh, do this on your own and play around with the uh, the different um, software and everything. Um, so let me just go back here. Um, okay, so Danielle is actually going to share with you from here a little bit more about interactive games. Those were all the show and tell. Now we want to think about how we can make it even more interactive. Great, thank you so much, Alana. Um, so a couple more ideas about some interactive group games that you can do online. Uh, one game is called Chain Reaction. Um, really easy, great methodology uh, where you ask certain questions. This could be used to get to know a group. You can answer personal, like questions about your own identity or about something external. But the idea is that whoever is um, asking the question, they ask someone, and then that person gets to pick the next person and the question. So I might ask Alana a question about herself, she might answer, and then she gets to pick the next person, she might pick Lisa, for instance. Um, so it just is a nice way to keep people on their toes because they never know when they're going to be called on. Um, 
alphabet story this works great in person it also works uh, pretty well online um, the idea is that you um, tell a story um, and each sentence needs to start with um, the next letter of the alphabet um, so this can be kind of an improv style game. Um, you can put restrictions on the game. Maybe it has to end up in a certain place or you can sometimes do a word limit. So each person can only say one word. Each person can only say three words. Um, you can also just do the word restri restrictions without the first letter um, restriction on there as well. So lots of different ways to tell a story as a group. Um, it forces you to listen what the person has said before you. Uh, be aware with this picture, uh, with this um, uh, with this game, that when you are looking at your group um, as like what we call the Brady Bunch view, so the gallery view with all the faces, people might come in a different order on my screen than they appear on your screen. So if you want to do something where people talk in a particular order, you want to be really prescriptive about who goes after whom. So just like a little note about that one. Um, you can also do a guessing game. And this is where our breakout feature comes in so beautifully. So we are going to demo this one. Uh, we are going to send a person out of the room so that they cannot hear our discussion. Um, the people in left in this room are going to make a decision about who or what we are going to be. Um, and then the person is going to be let back into our room and has to ask us some yes, no questions um, and they have to guess what we are. So we're going to do a little bit of a demo for this. Alana is going to select a victim, I mean a volunteer, to go out the room. And um, we will, um, so when that person has left, we will make a decision, everyone else back in the room, and then we will invite that person in. I just said a quick question. Um, yes. Would you be able, one of the things on a webinar yesterday that I was put into a breakout room and I found it really confusing. So, and there wasn't such a great explanation of what would happen when you leave the breakout room. Could you maybe model a good explanation for what we can share to the teens when we leave a breakout room, when we go, when we put them in? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So if you put someone into a breakout room, you'll want to give them full instructions before they go into the breakout room. There's also a broadcast function. So you can send little messages to the people in the breakout room um, with some prompt questions. The thing is that those questions don't stay up for very long, maybe about 20 seconds, if that. So if you want them to have some like ongoing explanations, give it to them before they, they leave. The other thing is that breakout rooms can be closed automatically by the host. So when they are closed, that is when the people in the breakout room will automatically re-enter the main room. So they don't have to worry about leaving the breakout space of their own volition. They actually get put back in the main room. Um, so forever now who is being separated into the breakout space, they will see that it will give you a little countdown timer and then you enter back into the space. So thank you. Excellent question. Um, so Alana, have we uh, placed a volunteer into this Do breakout? Now, because I wanted to make sure whoever I selected got to hear uh, your answer to that question. So Oops. opening all rooms, which is, um, so right now, the way it is, so I've sent one person, I had to do it manually. If you do it automatically, it would create rooms for everybody and then everybody would have been sent off. I created one room and I sent one person into that room. I'm actually going to uh, broadcast a message to that person. Um, we will call you back <laughs> in one sec. Um, so I can broadcast a message to that person. I also can jump into the room and visit that person. So the prompt that I'm going to give us is, can somebody just name a, um, a Jewish holiday? We're going to actually, we're going to have the person in the breakout guess what Jewish holiday we are as a group. So it's, they're going to be able to ask yes or no questions. Can somebody just choose a Jewish holiday, maybe one that isn't, you know, if you think of some of the main holidays, maybe something that's a little bit, won't be the easiest thing to guess. Mm -hmm. 
Someone suggested Shabbat into the chat box. Uh, we also have Sukkot as an option. What do we think? Shabbat? Should we do Shabbat? We've got Yom Ha'atzmaut as well. What's the What's the other one? Shabbat. Yom Ha'atzmaut is the other one. Okay. Do Do we want to do by show of hands? Do we want to do Sukkot? <laughs> Shabbat. Okay, and Yom Hatzmut. Okay, I think I saw the most hands for Sukkot, so I'm going to call back um, David. Close all rooms. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi. Welcome back. Um, Thanks. So the one thing that we would have done, I think, differently if we were with teens, we would have explained the instructions a little bit more thoroughly before sending somebody randomly into a room like you were. So thank you for being the brave soul with very little information. Um, but this is a guessing game. Um, we are in this group, a Jewish holiday. And um, you have to ask, um, you can ask anybody here that you see on screen a yes or no question. Um, and so just call on people at, so you can figure out what holiday we are. Um, anybody up for a question? You can pick on whoever you like. I can pick on whoever I want. Mm -hmm. I heard um, Sam, can I pick on you? I knew you were going to do that, and I don't remember which holiday, which, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, my question is, um, is the holiday celebrated for the same number of days inside of Israel and in the diaspora? I think you have to ask someone else. Okay. I don't remember what, the I don't group. Remember the holiday. That would be a nip. If you said something, I totally missed it because my connection cut out. That was a no. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, is the holiday in the spring? No. Um, is the holiday a festival? Yeah? Yeah. It's good. Yes. <laughs> Yay. My well, favorite holiday. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David, for being our guinea pig. Um, but doing that, um, you can use literally any prompt under the sun and let the person go into the breakout and um, and do this guessing game. You could also flip that on its head and actually because as the host, you can join any breakout room, you could leave the entire large group and tell the one person something secret that they can then come back in and know the thing and the group has to guess. So you can really play with that about um, and getting the group to ask questions. And once again, it's another way to be a little bit more dynamic so you're not just talking for an hour. Um, it's letting the participants take the reins a little bit um, and interact directly with one another. Um, so thank you for helping us demo. Thank you. Okay, so next options for some more interactive games. So a little resource which is going to be made available to you um, is a spinning wheel. So um, the beauty of the spinning wheel is it's great to start off conversations. You can create games around it. This spinning wheel is based on the seven core values of our new curriculum, the Change Makers curriculum. Um, and the great thing is, is that you click it and it spins. And then you can ask anyone um, in the group to say stop. Whoever is controlling uh, the spinning wheel can stop it. And whatever the arrow is pointing, you can have a discussion or a game or an activity around that particular value. Um, and it can just go on. You just click it to start to start it spinning and click to stop for any length of time. And so, 
So that is a nice useful resource which we're going to make um, available uh, to everyone. Okay, so other, um, other examples of some more interactive games, six word stories. Um, they're sometimes called six word memoirs. You can do these with different prompts. You ask people to create a six word story using only six words to create as, as most um, imaginative story as possible. It can also be on other prompts like, what does philanthropy mean to me? Or what do I do in order to give back to my community? Or it can be something fantastical, depending on what you're doing that day. And they can share those six word stories back verbally. They can type it in the chat box. Um, they can even create some sort of word collage around it. So you can do lots of different things. Um, trivia for anyone who knows the JTFN team, you know that we love a little bit of trivia. So we are gonna demo this. So uh, demo time, um, if everyone makes their way to menti.com, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Alana is gonna share her screen so you can see the front end of um, our trivia platform. Um, so this, so Mentimeter is free. There are paid options, but the free one is pretty good too. You can put in any kind of, um, trivia questions, you pre-populate it, you can have tons of people joining in on trivia games, and all you really need is your phone. So in order to go in and play the game, we want everyone to go to menti.com. Uh, when it asks for the code, you can add that code that is on your screen, which is 491820. Um, and we take it away from there. Uh, you will see some questions appearing on the screen as well as on your phone. You answer on your phone and then you will see the answers and the results appear on the main screen. Just like Alana is doing now, she is sharing her screen. So you can, um, uh, as the host, you'd be able to share. And then at the end, you can see who won and they show you a leaderboard. Um, so we're just going to start the quiz now. Um, as you filter in, hopefully you get to participate, but being that this is a demo, um, and not for big bucks, we're going to move forward. <laughs> so um, get ready to answer some fun trivia. Um, I should be reading this, but I didn't do it in time. So <laughs> um, there is uh, a countdown on voting. Um, you can actually set that up in advance, um, how you vote, um, how much time people get to vote. Um, then for our next question, um, it is of the five of the 15 celebrities that have egotted, won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, how many have been Jewish? Everyone has voted. And then final question, just some fun Jewish trivia. Uh, what Jewish actor plays a pansexual character on the hit TV show he co-created with his father? Ben Platt, Billy Eichner, Ezra Miller, or Daniel Levy? Also, somebody has a parrot, and it's awesome. <laughs> um, amazing. So now at the very end, um, we have our leaderboard. And it looks like Danielle is our winner. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but Mentimeter is really a fantastic site. There's also other sites you can use for similar features. Pull Everywhere um, is a good site. Um, the um, Kahoot is a good one. Um, so these are all different platforms that you can do interactive trivia and start plugging things in. Mentimeter is free. And so I highly recommend it. It's great. Um, we have all very much wanted to do Kahoots. Like I've been having one-on-ones with the B'nai Mitzvah kids and just getting everyone's feel for like what they want. And everyone has volunteered up Kahoot. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it's, there's some really great platforms out there. And now that we're, again, we're online, how do we make it interactive? How do we make it interesting? So definitely check, check out Kahoot if you're, uh, if you have colleagues that 
are using it and uh, like it. Um, so for prompt ideas, um, what can you do to sort of guide all these different games, to guide some of your just different discussions, just as we would in person, think about different Jewish values or different Jewish texts um, for participants to capture in that creation or item or photo or meme that they're going to bring to the meeting. Um, think about an article that you might want to have them read in advance of the meeting that could inform that discussion or help with what they create. Um, the other thing is just prompt questions in general. What different things should we be discussing and thinking about? Um, these might be kind of difficult times. So can we do some temperature check? Can we be there um, as we discuss some of these things? Um, and what is, um, and we also want to be thinking about linking the activity to what we're doing. So like today, we asked you a prompt about games. We were gonna be doing games. Make it, um, make it link, make it connect um, so that it's not just a random question, but really that you can um, make those ties happen throughout your session. Um, and so we've put up a couple of different um, prompt questions. Um, there are thousands of prompt questions you can be doing, um, but we, these are just a couple that came to mind for this present moment. So what is one thing you uh, do to practice or decompress in times of stress? When I say blank, what word comes to mind for you? And that's up to you as a facilitator to fill in that blank. Um, we also have share a time when you anticipated someone else's needs or helped without being asked. And also, of course, um, what is your first giving memory? And so these are just a sampling. Obviously, I'm sure there are literally thousands of questions that probably each of you could come up with that makes sense for your session. Um, but just be thinking about prompts so you can really get into some interesting uh, discussions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alana. So we're going to rattle through these because I want to make sure we have time for questions at the end and I'm just being cognizant of time. Um, so we opened the session beautifully with an opening ritual. We talked about games and activities that we can do in the middle. Uh, don't forget about the closing rituals too, as far as framing your space. Um, a really great prompt rather than rather than saying you know leaving it very open-ended you can say you know what was one thing i learned and what was one thing i'm still thinking about you can share that back verbally in the chat box or in um, other ways too um, you might want to give announcements for the next session anything they need next time uh, future webinars opportunities you want to add them in at the end um, a closing ritual is a really great time for a gratitude exercise so um, what are we grateful for how do we think about gratitude um, that can also be kind of popcorned as well. So if I answer, I can pick the next person who answers. And so you can use some of those other methodologies that we used earlier in the session. Um, you can also share things that you're gonna, that you look forward to. Um, right now, we are generally all stuck at home. Um, so really the, the little things are the things that we're looking forward to. So it's nice to bring those up and, um, you know, really acknowledge that we're all in a difficult situation at the moment. Um, so it's nice to, to look forward to, to things and to really appreciate what we have as well. So we covered a lot today and I really wanna make sure that we have enough time to answer some of your questions. Uh, there are some questions in the chat box that people have been putting along the way. So I wanna make sure that we get to some of those. And then also we can do um, a little bit of hands up as well uh, to check that we're answering everybody's questions. Um, someone brought up a really interesting question, which is if you send someone into a breakout space and then invite them back in the main room, can they see the ongoing chat box? Um, I think the answer to that is yes. So if you send someone out the room and want to have a discussion about a secret, a secret or a part of the gameplay, um, uh, don't write it in the chat box. What they won't see it is they won't necessarily see it in real time in the chat box, but they would probably be able to see it when they jump back in. So that is a really excellent question. Um, thank you for bringing that up. 
um, just looking to see if we have um, um, someone asked if cluster has a comment feature um, so that you can see um, if anyone write, wrote a comment on cluster um, I'm gonna defer to Alana on this one I don't I don't think so but that is something we can look into and let you know um, very excellent question um, we will yes we will send you links with the um, with any of the resources that we have mentioned today. So thank you for that question. Um, Alana, did you have any um, questions from you um, on your end? And also I want to open up the microphones here to anyone else um, who wants to ask a question. You can either literally put your hand up or if you go into the manage participant, um, at the bottom it says participants. I'm um, at the bottom of your screen. If you click that, all the participants come up on the right hand side um, and you can lower or raise your hand from there. Um, Alana, anything else on the chat box on your end? Um, I'll just note that some people are posting, um, like talking about Kahoot, um, that doesn't let students see questions. Um, and I think that is correct. I don't think Kahoot lets you see the questions. So that's part of why we happen to like Mentimeter was that when you go into presentation view, um, it did show the question um, to everybody and showed that leaderboard. It really just depends on your style of facilitation and what your needs are. So it's worthwhile to take a look at both. And I think in the case of uh, Mentimeter, it's pretty much free. There are paid plans, but for your purposes, most likely it's it'll work. Um, and then Kahoot, I think, has educator um, deals, uh, deals for educators, so uh, worth taking a look at. Um, There's a question here about live polling. Uh, yes, Zoom has a poll feature, um, so you can set that up in advance. Um, you administer the poll, you put the questions in, um, and then during the session you get to like a transmit, administer the poll, and people can answer questions. Uh, Menti also has a poll function, not just a quiz function, not just a trivia function. Um, and there are other items, like there are other um, more elaborate ways of doing it too. But if you want a really uh, basic, straightforward poll, you can actually do that within Zoom for easiness. So, uh, I saw I a hand up before. Oh, Jackie, go ahead. I have a question that a lot of my parents have been asking. Um, regarding like the privacy and like I guess oversight features of breakout rooms so let's say when I'm with the teens like when I'm with larger groups I might be having multiple hosts but if it's just me and like six teens on a hangout night and I I do an activity where I put like them in pairs in different breakout rooms I can jump in and out but at any given time teams are left alone in rooms. And like, even if you go to nifty conventions for like mixers or program rooms, there's always an adult present in every breakout room. So I guess how is, what's a best practice for handling that situation? Cause I, I've been asked by parents. So. Um, I think, you know, I, I run an online group with um, like our youth ambassador council uh, throughout the year. And so even before all of us moving online, I was already working with teens online. Um, part of it is setting expectations and naming that they're gonna have this time. It also is like, how much time are you going to be leaving them in that space? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do, you know, if you're concerned and, and you know that like, you know your teens are a little bit more chatty and need that extra layer, um, is it maybe that you're asking questions at a time, mixing them back up, sending them out, mixing them back up, sending them back out, rather than just being like, we're gonna have you sit in there for 10 or 15 minutes with all these things to figure out. Um, I think that it's gonna be a case by case basis. Also, you could invite other facilitators to be on your call. If you have a really large group and you want other facilitators in the room, um, invite them to be on the call. They can jump into those rooms. The thing that's kind of nice about having them, in my opinion and my experience, having the teens have that space to connect and to have some conversations to bond, 
right. I think overall tends to be a positive rather than a negative. But if you like, you, you're going to have to do it case by case. I, I agree. Think. It's been pushed back from parents. So, so yeah, I just want to have like a back pocket answer that's better than what I've been giving them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's case by case. And I think also, um, you can also say like, it's a space that, you know, if you frame it saying to the teens, if there's anything that they're experiencing that they have a question or concern, reach out to me privately, reach out to me directly, I'm here for you. You know, like some of it is, you know, if there's things that come up that like you're maybe not privy to, but that's the same in person or online. So like there's gonna, there's conversations that happen down the hall where parents and facilitators aren't there. It's the same, I think, idea. Do breakout rooms get recorded? No, no they do not. They do not. Um, we have one minute left, but I can see that there's a hand up. So I just want to address the final um, question before we close up. So Alana, I Ilana with an eye, sorry, um, and your parrot. Um, what is your question? Actually, it's a, I just noticed it's actually the same as the one in the chat box. Uh, do you know how you mentioned doing the, uh, the live, uh, doing the polling and setting it up beforehand? Is there a function to do that um, with Zoom or is that separate? I'm just wondering how, how, that, how we could work that out. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it is with Zoom, um, and actually there is, um, you can do um, a poll both um, beforehand and set it up beforehand. You can also do it in the middle of the meeting, which I tried to set up just now and failed a little bit. So I'd recommend no matter what doing it in advance, but technically you are supposed to be able to do it mid-meeting, um, and I was actually going to demo that, but it it failed. Um, so um, just uh, highlighting why it would be better to do it, but it's part of Zoom. It is a paid feature. So if you're using that account that is the 40 minute account, like and you're signed up as an individual, this is a feature that is part of having a paid version of Zoom. Um, so that's again, something to look into if to weigh out if your organization can afford to pay for it, if they think if they deem it a cost that they want to invest in at this moment. Um, the other thing that I'll just mention is with the chat feature, um, that's also something that I noticed in settings the other day, um, that you can actually, right now there's a chat feature where you can chat publicly to everybody or you can send a private message. Um, and so you can actually disable the private messaging feature before a meeting if you're concerned about teens chatting privately to one another. Um, and if you don't disable that, if you don't think that's necessary, just know that there can be side conversations happening directly through Zoom, um, potentially on your call. Well, so um, we are one minute over. Um, so I want to make sure that we're really cognizant of our time. Um, thank you all so, so much for participating and demoing um, some of the games with us. Um, we will be able to share out the resources to you so you know about uh, some of the links that we have. Um, so just an announcement coming forward. Um, watch this space because we have a very exciting announcement um, about something that is going to be happening this Sunday, which is an opportunity for teens. So please, please watch this space. Um, more details to come. Um, we also will be having other online uh, webinar sessions like this and also uh, talkabouts, which are more like free open spaces that we can chat and troubleshoot. Um, so there'll be a schedule of those going out um, in the coming weeks. Um, we are also here and available um, for one-on-one -on -one consultations. Um, I put our emails there um, in the slideshow. Um, so feel free to reach out with any extra questions that you have. Um, but thank you so much everyone for being here today. Thank you, Alana. Um, for putting together so much of, um, of this webinar. Um, and um, we will speak to everybody soon. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, thank you.